to our discussion group, our very first one of 2021. And I'm happy to have all of you here tonight. And we're going to be recording this for those that are not able to be here. This is, for those of you that are not regular attenders of Cornerstone, this is our mission statement to live and love and lead with Jesus. And that is our guiding principle at Cornerstone. It's, you know, the great commission to love God and love our neighbor. So everything that we are striving to do here at the discussion group is through this lens of love. And we believe that God is here with us right now, but we're going to go ahead and agree with that reality through an opening prayer. So Mark, you're up. Father, Son, and Spirit, thank you so much for uh, creating us in your image. And because of that, we are able to enjoy relationship with you with each other and with this earth, uh, the cosmos that we live in. Thank you for that. Thank you for that relationship. May we enjoy it uh, to the full. Uh, may we see every moment we have to live as a milestone. Uh, we, we know though that there are times in our lives that um, are meaningful and important. Uh, and sometimes we, we meet those and sometimes we don't. I'm praying for the family of uh, Grandma Garwood who at the age of 99 or 100 minus three weeks, um, is uh, is is now um, actually more in your presence, <laughs> we think, uh, than, than you are. Um, we're, we're grateful for her life and pray for the comfort of the family, that they would celebrate her and her legacy. And, and in, in that regard, I pray for those who are suffering from, uh, from COVID-19, uh, whether uh, they're on a respirator or just, um, uh, experiencing the, the long haul symptoms of, of having had it and now having uh, respiratory or lung or heart problems. Uh, we, we pray for um, a quick and, and, and speedy end to this pandemic, uh, but may we come alongside each other and support each other as we go through this very difficult time. Um, and speaking of that, uh, Trevor Dickey, I pray for him um, at such a young age. I pray that that youth and vitality and that strength will serve him well, but that you give him strength and, and heal him. Um, and not just his body, but also his mind, his emotions, at having the loss of a relationship. Thank you for his friendship with Daryl. And may he, may Daryl provide encouragement and support during this difficult time. Also with Marilyn, uh, Edie's friend, um, uh, the, the, the diagnosis of, of uh, such a vicious cancer is, um, I can't imagine what she's, and her family are going through. We pray for healing, for health, and for strength and peace for that family. I lift up to you all of our cares and concerns because we all we all have them on one level or another, and they're meaningful to us, they're important to us. Uh, and I'm glad we get to, to gather as this group uh, to share in that, uh, but also to uh, take some time to gather Look at your word in your way, in your will for our lives, not just us as individuals, but as your beloved children, um, as humanity. Um, and may we open our hearts and minds to the Spirit. Uh, Spirit, give us good grace. Uh, give us peace. Uh, give us comfort. And we pray that you would infuse us uh, with a, a deeper understanding of who you are, Spirit, um, as you join with the Father and the Son to give us life. Uh, and we thank you for that life. And we give this time to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Well, as I said in the intro, um, at Cornerstone, we strive to view everything through the lens of Jesus, who is love incarnate, God in the flesh. And love is not just like this pretty photo, um, although that is pretty and that is the Bible, but love is a committed, extravagant, and sacrificial uh, relationship. When we stop and think about it, it just, it blows our minds. And we're going to be talking about a lot of details and nuances and scripture and viewpoints over the upcoming weeks. And I want to make sure that we're starting on the right foundation. <clears throat> so if I can get a volunteer to read uh, Matthew 22, 37 through 40. And Mark, if you can help me find hands of anybody waving at me. They're all waving. They're I all can't waving. It. Everybody's they just all jumping. Read? Oh, wait a second. No. <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> all right. So whoever wants to read, go ahead and unmute your mic. 
whose mic is unmuted. Daryl, is your mic unmuted? I think Daryl wants to read. No, it's unmuted now. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. You asked me to read. You want to read? That'd be great. He doesn't have a little mic icon. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. All the law and all the prophets. And it's in this spirit that our group back in August of 2018 in our living room, seems like forever ago, came up with the guidelines that um, are now on your screen. So these are Seth's favorite. Maybe I should have Seth read it. Well, he's not on. Oh, he's not on. Okay. Well, um, you can go ahead and read it, especially if your mic's muted. We'll just read these together. Um, this is kind of how we started our, our discussion group in the very beginning. We would read these together and we wrote these together over a matter of weeks. So these were our guidelines to speak in love, to choose relationships over having to be right, to respect everyone, every opinion, to give others a space to speak. In other words, don't talk over each other. <laughs> no. To get and give permission to share or repeat personal stories. So that has to do with confidentiality. Clarity over agreement. In other words, asking good questions to make sure we understand what the other person's trying to say and leaving no one behind. That was the last one we added um, to just make sure that everybody is uh, traveling along the journey together. And we believe that the mission of the church is dependent on how we do, how well we love God and we love our neighbor. And we do this with Jesus. That's why we say this at the end of every one of our services. So therefore, um, we want to, in this topic, humbly engage um, conversations with one another and to listen intently to one another. And we're going to have diverse opinions and expressions. And um, through that discipline of listening to one another, we're going to grow and we're going to um, see the heart of the Father, I think, and make him more known in the world. So you might be walking in here with a set of beliefs. In fact, most of us are even if you're still in the midst of trying to figure out what you believe, what's in your suitcase. And we want to hear what your beliefs are. We want, and we hope that over the upcoming weeks, we're all going to have time to share what those beliefs are and bring those beliefs to the table. All we ask is that you don't use this suitcase of beliefs to smack somebody else upside the head. Okay. Um, don't stomp on other people's beliefs and um, whether whatever side you're on, of this issue, or somewhere in the middle, um, we want to be good listeners. And I don't believe you need to defend God here. I think he's big enough to defend himself. And I think the Holy Spirit is quite in control and we've invited him into this conversation. So I propose that, um, you know, if anyone here starts to get defensive and mean and rude, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna nicely encourage us to, and I don't think anybody, I know you all, and I don't think we're going to have a problem here. Um, but in the Christian church, um, people have used their beliefs and scriptures to beat other people up. And that is not what we're here for. Um, I guarantee you, you are absolutely going to agree with some things here, and you're going to not agree with some others. And I don't want to ignore that. I want to honor and respect that. And I want, and I ask that you just honor and respect others as well. So to start off, I want to show you, I love graphs and charts and pictures. You'll see I've got a lot. Um, so a common way that many of us approach ethical and theological issues is, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find this to be familiar. So somebody will approach you and go, so tell me, what do you believe about X? You know, it could be whatever. What do you believe about butterflies, you know, or whatever. And depending, or what do you believe about the guitar in church, you know, so and depending upon that person that's asking you, it could be a very simple, straightforward answer, or it could be an interrogation, right? And and I use the guitar because that's that was okay. something that was controversial in the church like 30 years ago. Yeah. So um, like, ooh, Different. guitars and drums in the church, ooh. Um, but um, you know, depending on your answer, like if you said, 
um, oh, I think that's the devil's music and shouldn't be in church. You'd either be applauded or praised or you'd be condemned and ostracized. And that, that way of functioning does not lead us to learn and grow. It also doesn't lead us to love God and love our neighbor in, in a way I think that would honor Christ. So we want to carefully think, carefully listen and think deeply as we um, listen to one another. So this chart shows, if you've had time to look at it now, that the danger zone is right here, my friends. I don't know if you can see my cursor, probably not. Um, oh, you know what? I have a little laser. Ooh, look at this. Watch this. There we go. Oh, how'd you do that? Ooh, I'm, I'm techie. Hi, techie. Yeah, um, so if you are, like, when we get a little bit of knowledge, we tend to go right up to here, like, oh, I know everything, and let me just tell you all about it, right? And that's dangerous, because we really don't have a ton of knowledge, but we have a lot of confidence. And this is where people beat each other up, okay? And I'm going to ask you to slide right over to this <laughs> right here where we start to say, trust me, like as we learn more together, this is complicated. This topic is not so black and white as we might think. Um, and although you might have a black and white position on it, the topic truly is very complex. So um, this is called, by the way, I wanna give credit. This is called The Knowledge Illusion by Stephen Sloman and Philip Fernback. And I just, if we could all agree that we don't know everything and that we're all learners here, including myself, I've put all these slides together, but honestly, I am learning as I go. And that's the only way I can go forward. Um, we don't, we didn't hire an expert to come in and talk to us. And I think it's better because we can all learn together and travel along together. So let's all just commit to doing the hard work of learning, reading, listening, and not just basing our decisions on what we already know. And let's be faithful to God, to his word, and to each other. So tonight I'm going to ask that we all have this posture right here, this posture of humility where we have come to prepare to learn. Um, humility means listening to one another, desiring to understand that whole thing, that list we already looked at, clarity um, of understanding what the other person is trying to say. And I have a couple quotes. This is from Parker Palmer. Uh, humility is the only lens through which, that's supposed to be through, through which we, which great things can be seen. And once we've seen them, humility is the only posture possible. And I think that's kind of speaking to that graph. Like once we realize, wow, how much we don't know, we're, we're humbled again. And the only way we can actually learn is to be humble. So a posture of humility and conversation allows both parties to engage honestly and receive what the other person is actually saying. And um, there's this saying that you've probably heard. Um, I think Stephen Covey made it the most popular, but it's kind of based off Proverbs 4, 7. And then in the prayer of it, well, Proverbs 4, 7 says, the beginning of wisdom is um, to acquire wisdom and with all your acquiring, get understanding. So basically seek first to understand and then be understood. Uh, and then St. St. Francis of Assisi in 1912 wrote, Oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the, in the giving that we receive, it is in the pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in the dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? And then, of course, Stephen Covey was the one who actually, um, and he's He's you probably most of you know the seven habits of highly effective people. He's the one who kind of put the coin that phrase and, and put it out there. Seek first to understand and then to be understood. So I think it's a good motto to live by. So that's our posture. And above all, we want to honor God and we want to honor the other person that is uh, across from us on the Zoom screen, even though you might seriously disagree with them. So I have one more scripture before we get started. And um, this is, you all recognize it, 1 Corinthians 13, and this is in the, the poise and the position and the attitude that I would love to proceed. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. 
It keeps no record of wrongs. It does not delight in evil. It rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love never fails. <clears throat> so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I would love to hear what brought you here tonight. Why are you here? What are you hoping to get out of this conversation? And um, if you have the courage to share, and it could just be say, I, I just want to learn. I don't know a lot about this. Or, you know, my brother is gay and I want to know how the scriptures line up with that reality. Whatever um, is brought you here, this is the time for us to kind of see each other's faces. So I'm going to stop sharing. So that, did it stop? Yep. It did? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Great. All right, let me make my screen big. All right. So um, any brave souls that would like to go first and tell uh, the group why you're here? Hilda, go ahead and unmute your mic and share with us why you're here. Brian, my son, is gay. He is not here this week. If he were here, I wouldn't be able to watch because I don't have earbuds. And he's watching his AA meeting on Zoom. So I have to get earbuds for next week. Okay. <laughs> to be able to understand him better. And in the Bible, God says it's an abomination and he hates that type. But he never, ever tells us to hate him. Awesome. And I love my son and I'd like to understand him better. Beautiful. Thank you, Hilda. He has a lot of problems. I did not know that. That's good to know. Okay, Jamie um, and Stephanie, uh, go ahead and unmute and share while you're here tonight. Uh, my son is also gay. He's the oldest and he has a spouse. So I have a son-in-law that's about 15 months older than me. Which is oh, wow. Odd, but, and him and I get along great. He calls me all the time, but I still, I know that, you know, in scripture, it's, it's an abomination. And although I don't support his decision, I accept it. He's my son, and I, you know, I'm happy for him, you know, for his happiness. But he knows that I don't agree. I just basically <coughs> agree. <clears throat> but I like to know more about it too. It's it's like this is like a a learning informational thing for me too, so I can be able to understand more. It's not going to make me um, look badly toward him. I mean, his actions, yes. But I, I, I guess I just want a little bit more of an understanding about it. Okay, um, great. Stephanie, go ahead and share while you have your mic undone. Um, I, I have a brother who uh, was gay. He died a couple years ago um, from complications of AIDS. Mm -hmm. And um, I loved him dearly. He was, he was, a, he was a sweet man. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, think, I think toward the end of his life, I think he lived a celibate life. I... Mm -hmm. He, uh, he joined a church, Episcopal church. Mm -hmm. They, they loved him and he, you know, but, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't love him any less because of his lifestyle, but, um, you know, it, it's, we all need to learn the ways to, without compromising God's law to, um, love and how to treat how to I don't really know what I'm trying to say but how to um, accept or or whatever our, our family members or even even friends or strangers or whoever without looking down on them or or judging them or whatever so I, I think this was really great, and if 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 uh, Janice hadn't suggested it, I, I was next on the list because I really wanted to get into this subject because I think it's important. Awesome, thank you, Stephanie. I I know it's been on our list since the very first uh, meeting when we put everything on the list. It's just such a a big topic to tackle. Um, I know it's it's been looming there, so I'm I'm grateful to be able to start the year. Um, I'm not an expert, but I have, oh, Mark, do you want to show me your stack of books? <laughs> He's going to look at Mark's screen. Um, if you have a, a phone, you'll have to scroll over to find him. 
but oh, oh you, I don't know if you can see it. You're gonna have to hold it. This is this is a stack of books that we have. Not not our Kindles and our audio books. These are all on this topic, and we haven't read them all, but we're working. Through it. We're working through it slowly. So it's a big topic. Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for sharing, Stephanie and Jamie. Yeah, some of those books are more general about personal identity or sexuality. relations or, mm -hmm. or, or sexuality in general, but most of them are on the topic. On the topic. Yes. So who else would like to share why you're here? Janice, you want to share? And then Marguerite after that? Yeah, I wanted to learn more because I have more teenagers telling me about the differences and I don't understand it. So I want to try to get into uh, understanding how they uh, see sex, the different sexes, because they don't see us as female and male and all of that. I mean, it's, it's and it, it's just really mind boggling how they do see us as humans. So I just want to know more so that I can be more sympathetic and more compassionate uh, to them because I'm, you know, I'm like a little deer with the headlights because I don't, they, they're talking to me, but I don't have a clue what they're saying. I don't, it doesn't penetrate. I don't know. I, I have nothing to pull on to help me understand it. So uh, that's you, your, your heart is always toward ministry to young people. I love that about you. Uh, Marguerite? Um, I'm really interested to hear everybody's opinion and to hear what you've read because um, this touched, you know, my family, my, my granddaughter was in a relationship with a, another girl from high school. Um, <laughs> and my son came to me and said, what do you think, you know, about this? And I feel like, you know, I didn't, I could have given him a better answer. What I said was that, you know, everything I could see biblically, you know, it's it's wrong and there's it's pretty clear, you know, the Bible's pretty clear about it, but that nothing would make me not love her anymore. I and mean, nothing would make me allow anybody to um, um, you know harass her or, you know, I mean. It didn't change the, the way I, you know, I thought she should be treated or the way I would feel about her, but I couldn't come up with anything beyond that. I, I felt like it wasn't a, a good answer, you know, so I'm hoping to learn more. Thank you, Marguerite. Okay, so we've got Carol. Hold on, what did you say? Um, Carol and I think is that the other one? Oh, and then Sierra after Carol. Okay, go ahead, Carol. Well, years ago, uh, they didn't talk about things like that, and I was probably a senior in high school when I first became aware of it. And my best girlfriend was engaged to be married in June after graduation. And I was the maid of honor, and like uh, three or four weeks before the wedding, she got a letter from him saying he was in love with his male friend and couldn't go through with the marriage. And she was just devastated. And I was thinking in love with his, you know, that was just so, <laughs> so foreign to me and so it seemed weird and peculiar and unnatural. And I didn't understand it. And then when I started learning more about it, I was very, very puzzled and very not wanting to blame them for it, you know? I felt like it wasn't really, well, if you listen to what they tell you, they don't choose. As far as some of them say, my very first recollections, you know, I, I felt different. And uh, I ha felt a great deal of sympathy for them and yet, then when I was reading the Bible and finding out what the Bible said about it, I really didn't know what to understand. I still don't know what to understand. And it's been a sticking point with me for a long time. But one thing I do know is we need to show them love and compassion, just like everyone else. Thank you, Carol. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really want to learn a lot more tonight. <laughs> okay, well, we'll barely scratch the surface yeah. tonight, I think, but um, we are on a journey and I'm committed to to walk this out with, with all of us. So thank you, Carol. And I, I just love everybody's heart and how um, you're coming here to learn. So Sierra, you're up. Hello. Um, so what literally brought us here tonight was, um, we, we're not sure we can attend every night, but because uh, I work at 6.30 in the morning. Um, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> my dear lovely husband was exposed to COVID on Friday, oh. um, and he was informed today um, about it. So right after work, we both got tested. So tomorrow and Friday, we're both taking off until we get our hopeful negative test back. Wow. Um, so we don't have to wake up early in the morning. So that's why I came. I, 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 I made a phone call. <laughs> I made a phone call. <laughs> yes. I am possibly going to fall asleep, though. So I we won't take it no, personally. No worries. I totally um, get it. I got home but, at 10.30 this morning. <laughs> this boy was already falling asleep. It's 10.30 yeah. there for you. I, I get it. Um, but we, we both told her like weeks ago when we saw that you guys were doing this topic, we were like, we at least got to attend the first one because, um, uh, this topic is like a, like a pet issue of mine. Um, I've gone through a, a pretty, I want to talk about this, trying not to tear up because I get pretty emotional when I talk about it sometimes. Um, but long story short. Um, it's an issue that I've almost left the church over um, because no matter how hard I try to reconcile, um, I could not see how a God can be good if he rejects people for loving who they love. Um, before I got married, um, before I met Patrick and fell in love with him and everything. I, I, I always like to intellectualize love. Like I imagine what love would feel like. And, you know, I read books and I was like excited to get married. And I, and I tried to imagine what loving another person would feel like. And in that I had my ideas about um, uh, LGBTQ plus people and I couldn't fully understand, um, you know, I also wrestled with the issue of like what the Bible says about it and, you know, real people that I see in my face um, who identify as gay and I couldn't reconcile those two. And then I, and then I experienced love and I was able to recognize it in other people. And um, what, the love that I see in so many of my uh, gay friends, I know it's real and I know it's holy and I know it's pure, just as my love for my husband. And um, the more I heard the church call them, call that love an abomination, um, I, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't get with that. Um, and so a lot of wrestling, a lot of soul turmoil. Um, but that's where I've landed. I've landed on that. Um, I personally don't care what the Bible says about it because what I see in real life, what I see in front of my eyes um, is pure and holy. And I know that uh, whatever God is projected through uh, the main church right now is not the God I believe that actually exists. I, I, I have to believe that God truly loves and accepts and honors all people, no matter who they choose to love or marry or have sex with. Um, so that's where I've landed. So what brought me here <laughs> to, answer, to circle back is mainly to listen because I know I can't we probably can't attend every week so I, I don't 
plan on like contributing too much that I can't that I can't like follow up with week to week but um but um because this is kind of like a pet thing of mine um I want to listen first but also in hopes that not necessarily just this church but church in general would move to a place where they not only just accept gay people but honor them as fully human and as fully divine as any of us on this call. Um, so yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Patrick, uh, can you add to that or is your wife your spokesperson? She's my spokesperson. Okay. Um, I appreciate you being here and I appreciate you being honest. Um, you know, you represent a different generation than most of us. So, and I really, really um, value having your voices here. So we are gonna be recording this. So hopefully the times that you can't be on, you can watch and contribute in whatever form God compels you to. All right, who's next to share? Um, I do have content to share um, as well, but I do wanna hear if everybody's willing to share. Okay, Daryl, go ahead and unmute yourself and um, let us know why you're, what brought you here tonight? You're, you're muted, I'm Daryl. Yeah, so I'm muted. I'm, I'm trying to use my phone to sit on that thing because my when I click it, it doesn't unclick sometimes. Okay. Uh, yeah, anyway, so I, nothing in particular, I don't think. I did change my background, you'll notice. I put a picture up here. I don't, for some reason, my beautiful mahogany hand-carved eagle looks like a piece of cardboard. It's I don't know <laughs> why it's sticking through in this background. It's picture great. It <laughs> but the picture I'm showing here is a living room of an uncle whose house I used to resort to for a couple of weeks when I felt bad, or I still do. We still very, he's the, I guess the grand patriarch of our family now. And he's gay, he's always been gay. Um, but he never talked about being gay. And we never really talked about him being gay. It was just understood that he was gay and it wasn't really a, a topic of deep discourse, even though I'm from the deep South, it, it, where you know there was a lot of consternation about uh, the gay movement when it first, just sort of brushed it out of the, out of the closet in America. But I don't really have a, a deep agenda here. I just want to hear what everybody thinks. And uh, the, the one thing I always bear in mind when I'm thinking about um, gay as a group, which I'm not sure that's even, a, I'm not sure that's fair to group people in any class like that, but I'll just say as a group, is rather than what should I think about them being gay, I think it's better to think about what should that person come away thinking about me as as a Christian mm -hmm. and um, as an instrument of God and as a vessel of the Holy Spirit after my encounter with them, especially if it's my first encounter or especially if it's someone who just announced that their day, for example. Mm -hmm. so, so so it's not in, in this case, it's not about them. It's about me. I guess. Right? Mm -hmm. what, what should I be doing? Um, what words should I be allowing the Holy Spirit to say through me? How, what should I even be thinking about? Wow. And I just want to see what the overall mix is about what people are thinking, what they're saying. I guess there's three ways to look at that. One is, do you believe it's right or do you believe it's wrong? Whose business is it, right? In other words, who's the judge of it and what should you do about whether you believe it's right or wrong or not, right? And um, is it is it normal or natural or good or whatever you want to call it, right? So there's kind of three ways of looking at it. I guess the nature of the thing, um, uh, my reaction to it, or should there be any, right? And um, and do I believe it's right or wrong? Wow. Maybe in that order. Maybe in that order. <laughs> Very well said. We might include those in future discussions. I like how you think. So logical. Get his bullet points ready. <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. Um, okay, who else have we not heard from? Anybody want to share? Um, I, I personally know everybody here, and this is a safe group. So um, thank you for, for helping make it safe, too, by, by being willing to share. Anybody else? Yeah, I will. Oh, Cindy, thank you. Okay, so just because um, I'm part of the woman's the Bible study cafe Yay. and um, so just basically the reason why is because you invited me in 
And I know that this is a new position for you. So I wanted to be part oh, of it. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I've heard many, many, and have studied a little bit on the subject, but it's always good to go back over it. Always. always. So here I am. So grateful to have you here. So thank glad. you, Cindy. Great. Um, your voice will be very important to this conversation. All right, anybody else? want to share before we move on? It doesn't look like my mom's going to share, but my sister, um, the second born um, of, the, of us girls, she was engaged and almost married a gentleman and he backed out right at the last minute. She had a ring and everything um, because he realized he could not go through with it because he, he was gay and um, he ended up dying of AIDS, right mom? I think he died of AIDS. I think it was, yeah. Sure. She's she's muted, but um, and no, it was it was suicide. Oh, oh that's suicide. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Which is another. Yeah, that's another very, very big common thing um, for people yeah. in the LGBTQ community. Just a lot of shame, a lot of isolation, a lot of lo loneliness. Especially, so, especially. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, and. Of course, for Mark and I, um, we don't have any family members that have identified in that uh, as, as homosexual or transgender, but we have a young man that was our neighbor, um, a lot of you know him, Tony, um, who now goes by River. He's a Native American, like he's chosen that name to identify him, and he actually goes by them, they, there. So I have to, it's hard for me to remember not to call him a he, but for this context, <laughs> I'll go ahead and do that. But um, I just love that kid. And he, we knew him pre-puberty. He was just this little uh, kid that would ride over on his scooter and play all his instruments and come to, come to camp with us and come to church with us and sing in the choir and then watched him grow in so many areas, like, like just an amazing story. And he started realizing as he hit puberty that he wasn't like everybody else. And he went through all kinds of phases. And I love that uh, person. <laughs> I, I just think he's um, amazing. And it's, it sent Mark and I on a journey because all of a sudden it was right there. What are we going to do with it? What do we tell him? How do we navigate this? How does the church accept him? And so that, that um, and then as a summer camp director, you know, we were kind of had our hands tied by how our denomination was um, telling us how we had to run the camp and he couldn't be on staff because he was LGBTQ. And, and so there were, we've been through, we've wrestled through a lot of this um, in loving him and wanting to help him to, all his friends told him, you have to choose, you're either gay or you're a Christian, you can't do both. And um, that was a real tough, that was real tough for him. He loved God and still does in his own way. So um so this is a journey that I think has touched most of us. Um, anybody else want to share before I, Alice, go ahead. Well, I didn't originally want to share, but my brother, Charlie is gay. So, um, and I love him. And um, so is there a conflict though? I mean, because it says, the Bible says to love thy neighbor and everything, but then it says that um, you're not supposed to lie with the same sex. Well, we will get into that. That is a big question. And um, that's what we're going to be covering. We've got scriptures. We've got research. We've got different ways to look at it. So Years of church tradition. Years right? of church tradition. Yeah, yeah there's lots Plus. to cover. So... Um, thank you, Alice, for, for sharing that. I have met Charlie, and he is a wonderful person. I really enjoyed getting to meet him at your husband's memorial service. Um, Mark, did you want to say well, something? I'll go last. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Or is there somebody else with their hand up? This is important to me to hear. I, I can't believe how many of you are related to somebody who is um, gay or homosexual. Or, we haven't talked about transgender, but that's that's another part of the LGBT LGBTQ uh, conversation. Um, and I know that um, there's a couple other people that are on here and are going to be joining us that have siblings that are are also um, homosexual. Do you, did you want to go ahead and go? Yeah, I'll go ahead and go. Uh, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Did you want to say something? Hello. Yeah. Go oh, ahead. Hello. Look at that. Yeah. I tried. I, Look yeah. at that face. <laughs> um, the reason why you haven't seen me is because I'm still working. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, just to add on, uh, my brother is gay. Noel, for those of you that know him, younger brother. Um, and before he came out as gay, I used to just harp on him. The kind of music you listen to was girly. The way you talk should be like this and mm. trying to get him to be more masculine. Mm. Right? I was in my early teens at the time. And when I found out that he was texting a guy um, about wanting to date, it was, it was 11, 12 year old kind of language they're using, but it's the language I would use when I would want to talk to a girl, you know, when I talk mm -hmm. to a girl. And it's like, not 12 year old language, but, <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, I felt really bad. And then when he officially came out, I apologized to him. I apologized for all the things that I, that I said, because being a man is more than being masculine. Mm -hmm. So what does masculinity mean in and of itself, right? And so it's, I've had to struggle with how I treated a person who was gay, my own brother, you know, I love him and, and we've reconciled all that and, and he loves me and I love him and we're doing great. But I, I just wish that I, I didn't have those preconceptions of what it meant to be a man. And maybe he wouldn't have been so hurt. Wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have done harm to him in that way, you know? Um, Beautiful. So I'm just hoping to spread love and help others spread love. Even what, what, whatever the Bible says about it, you know, ultimately the greatest commandment is to love others. Thank you, Jesus. He's part of our family. So I guess when I said I didn't have a family member, I was wrong, huh? Um, anybody else want to share? I just, I, yeah. I'm, I'm just amazed. Go ahead, David. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So just to answer the first question, why, uh, what brings me here? Uh, I mean, that's just because you know we, I, I've come to all of them, and this sounds like a topic. Yeah, yeah. Just to, um, I just want to take like a just a quick opportunity to put my my uh, just where I'm coming from out, out for for reference, and like I'm like, um, like my personal belief is like I've looked into, I have you know I've looked into this issue, and like I've like taken time aside to like go and read through. In the Bible, look at look at the different verses that people use to talk about homosexuality and that kind of stuff. And like my like the conclusion I, I've come to is just honestly, I don't think it's a sin. I think I think people are just entirely mis misinterpreting it. And like that's a I get the feeling that's like not a not a common conclusion that people a lot of people come to. Um, and it's it, it would take a while to like go into and explain why I believe that. But um, at the end of the day, that's that's my that's my my stance on. Thank you, David. Glad you're here. Get your roommate to get on too when he can. Oh yeah, where is he? <laughs> so that's what we need is the the young uh, people's understanding of it because um, because we as older people have been taught such a negative way about it, and you know that's just like with racism. Chloe was the first person who taught me how to deal with white people and I was raised around white people. But when she fell in love with that little redhead white boy, I was like, what? That can't be true. You can't do that. You're black. You're not supposed to do that. But that's what I'm saying. Those, those are, are ingrained in you from little, little people all the way up to your childhood. And if you don't learn anything different, then you're going to continue with that. But I, I, I'm, I agree with, with uh, Sierra and, and, and David. I don't think that um that that's that that's how he meant it I, I i just don't i can't see i see god in a nice in a loving more caring way than to condemn somebody because of that you know so i'm really happy that they're here because they're the ones that i need to listen to because uh, i'm around so much of it here in mm -hmm. pueblo uh you know and they're young people you know they're in their 20s you know early 20s you know so it's it's something that I need to open up my head. I, I can't. And when you have so much junk in it, mm -hmm. 
it's hard to get rid of what you've been taught for so long. And that's why I love to listen to the young people because they do have a, a different perspective on how I was raised and what I was taught, even in the church, you know. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for opening up and talk, talking to us. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark, I think you're up. Yes, I am so glad I made it to this one. And I hope my schedule remains the same that I can have Wednesdays off uh, to be with you through this conversation because it is absolutely important. And I would say crucial because aren't we all sexual beings? Aren't we, aren't we all gendered or, or agendered? Um, this, it's, it's part of who we are. And so often in the church, it's um, taboo to talk about it. Uh, some churches don't even have a, uh, a part of it in their statement of faith, and um, and if it is in their statement of faith, it's not explained, certainly not explained deeply or um, over a long period of time from the pulpit, and I can understand why, because it has become a controversial issue, uh, but I, I think it's important to, I think it's important to us, I think it's important to the church, and um, we, I, I just so value this safe place that, that we can, we can even say things that we may not even understand, understand what we're saying. It's more of a feeling or, um, or we, we can be safe to, to say, well, this, this is the way I, I see it. And, and that's, that's what I believe. And, and we can all, we can all support each other, um, through that. And, um, we will be going through verses. We will be looking at words. We will be looking at interpretation and translation and the tradition, historical Christian stance, the tr tradition over the hundreds, if not thousands of years of, 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 of tradition. And, and we certainly want to, whatever the, what, whatever the case, we don't want to create a God in our own image. Um, we do want to, the Bible to have one of the loudest voices in, in this. And, um, I, 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 I'm just, I'm just glad that it's, it's taken us in one sense a long time, uh, to get here. Uh, and, 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 and I think this is going to serve us. It's going to serve us to be, uh, more understanding family members, uh, members of society, uh, contributors to the to the church and um, it, it's always good to be I guess I guess you can say educated uh, to be immersed in, in a topic in a, in a subject um, and to, to know why we believe what we believe and why we say what we say and why we believe God to be the, the kind of God he is uh, so so I'm ex I'm excited I'm really really happy we're in this in this together Thank you, Mark. I hope you will all bear with me and maybe stay on for 10 extra minutes because I really want to. Oh, it's 10 till. I told it's, you, I told you this would take a little time and it's good. <laughs> you told me I kind of had a plan. I'm like, okay, we'll spend 20 minutes sharing. Well, it's to me, it's super important to hear from each one of you. And for those watching the recording, we did not gather a bunch of people who had people that were related that were gay. Like this is just our normal Wednesday night discussion group and look how, how we've all been touched and impacted by this and how much this really matters because these are people we love and we need to know how to respond. So, mm -hmm. and, and I, and I think it, it's important for us to, to share a bit of our heart and who we are. So, so that we can better, better talk about it together and better share and, and put a, put a face, <laughs> mm -hmm. a warm, loving face to, to, to it all as well. Yeah. Okay, um, I spotlighted Mark so that you would see his face when he was talking instead of mine. I hope that yeah, works. Yeah, that'd be the last that time. That'd be the last time you do that. No. <laughs> I see in the chat when everybody says, "Can you take him off spotlight, please?" <laughs> okay, so if you want to turn back to gallery, just click on your little uh, view button, and you can go to gallery view, and it will take him off spot. It'll take him off the spotlight. So. Um, okay, so we talked about what brings you here. Um, how can we best talk about this? I think first we need to define some terms. 
I think that's really important so we know what we're talking about. So I took this from a site called The News Minute, Let's Talk LGBTQ+. This is dated back in 2016. And we're just gonna hit a couple. So the L stands for lesbian. It's a sexual orientation and it's when a woman is primarily attracted to a woman. Most people know these terms, but gay, that's the G, LG, is, is also an orientation and it's a man who's primarily attracted to other men. We call that same gender attraction. That's an, a phrase that Mark and I use a lot. Um, the B stands for bisexual. That's also a sexual orientation and that is when a man a woman or questioning person is attracted to both men and women. The T stands for transgender, a little bit different. This is not orientation, this is gender identity. And this is when a person whose gender identity is the opposite of their assigned biological sex, what they were born with. So a trans man, a trans woman, and sometimes you'll see cross-dressers and drag queens in this mix. Um, because they identify other than what their genitalia is. So um, the Q actually stands for two things, QQ, queer and questioning. And this has to do with gender and sexual identity. So queer is an umbrella that term for non-mainstream sexualities, and it covers a lot. Uh, questioning is a term for someone who is reassessing either their orientation or their gender or both. So you'll see this a lot, LGBTQQIAA. <laughs> and what that stands for, I just use a plus, but what that stands for, I went through the LGBT. Uh, there's another T in there, so it's TT, um, transsexual. It's an outdated term that originated in the medical and psychology communities for people who have permanently changed their gender identity through surgery and hormones. So today we just, we call that transgendered. There's, we, today we call it transgender. Oh, right, we used right, to call it transsexual. Right, right. Um, we already talked about queer and questioning. So the I stands for intersex. And that is an individual whose sexual anatomy and chromosomes and or chromosomes do not fit the traditional markers of a female or a male. And there are people out there um, that have, some, some people have both male and female body parts. And um, we don't, and like, like several of you have said, oh, we don't talk about these things. Like, you know, you might've had a, a, an elderly uncle or a grandpa or someone who was gay and, but you would never talk about it, that this person was, um, had maybe different body parts than they were supposed to have, right? It was just kind of shameful. Um, and the ally is typically a non-queer person who supports and advocates for the queer community. And I would say many of you are allies and maybe all of you. An individual within the LGBTQ plus community can be an ally for another member that identifies differently than them. Um, asexual is not something we talk about a lot, but it is out there. Um, an individual who generally does not feel sexual desire or attraction for any group of people. And it's not the same as celibacy where you're just denying a desire you have, but it's, you actually have, uh, it's actually a group um, it's, it's diagnosable, I guess you want to say. They just don't have sexual desire toward another human being. And then pansexual is a person who kind of keeps their options open, right? Pan. Um, they're, they experience sexual, romantic, physical, and spiritual attraction to members of all gender identities, expressions, and not just people who fit into one category. So hopefully that helps you. LG, LGBTQQIAAP. There you go. So LGBTQ plus is, is a little easier. So real quick, there's a spectrum. And that's one thing I want to make sure that we talk about it. This isn't just black and white. Are you gay or are you not gay? It's not homo hetero. It's, there's spectrums. So um, biological sex, male, female, I think all of us know some men who are a little more feminine and not gay and women who are a little more masculine and not gay, right? It, there's, it's hormones, you know, and how those have been distributed across our brain. Um, but this is kind of the scale, male, intersex, female, and identity, man, gender, queer, woman. Not going to stick on these too long. Um, the spectrum of gender expression. So this is sex and identity. And I, I have exchanged and interchanged those two words my whole life. I thought gender and sex were the same thing. I'm learning 
that um, I have to, sex is what the doctor said when you were born. Oh, it's a girl. Slap. Slap. On the booty. <laughs> On the booty. Um, gender is how you identify. It's the um, mental and psychological part of the person. And, and sometimes those don't match. And that's what we call transgendered. Um, and gender expression, fe feminine, androgynous, masculine, I think you probably know what those terms mean, orientation, heterosexual, bisexual, pansexual, and homosexual. Um, so let's, miss, let's list some main scriptures. We're, we, d we will not get into any of these tonight. We won't even read them tonight, but feel free to read them at home. Uh, you can write some of them down. I can send them out an email. We're going to go through these. Yeah, so we are going to go through these. Start amassing your questions. So, oh yes. And if you have questions, start jotting them down. You can put them in the chat room. You can send them on a text or an email. Um, there are, well, I'm listing 12 here. Uh, there are a few more that are kind of on the peripheral. These are 12 that speak of homosexuality in the Bible. And these are the six that are used the most by evangelical Christians um, to when they go to to discuss this topic. Genesis 19:5, Leviticus 18:22, Leviticus 20:13, Romans 1, 26 through 27, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 1 Timothy 1, 9 through 10. And maybe you could pause it because oh, Carol's writing them down. Yeah, so I'll I'll leave it here for a minute. Um, what we're gonna do in just a moment after I give you a moment to write that down. Ooh, look how fast I did that. Um, we are going to look at four general Christian views of homosexuality. And I looked long and hard for a book, a video, a something that just made it easy. And I didn't find one, but I did find an article. And based on that article and a bunch of other um, books, videos, and podcasts, I put together a chart because you know Anne likes charts. Anne likes charts. Yes. Okay. You know that about me. Okay. Can I move on or are you still writing? Oh, it looks like there's a lot of heads down still. I can send these out in, in an email. Sure. Too. So as long as you've got a couple in there, Carol's madly writing. I can't, I can't advance the slide while Grandma Carol's writing. No way. That, that would, would be, be mean. mean. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stephanie, Jamie. Yes. I'm sorry, did you say that there was seven or six? There's six main, main ones, ones here. Um, all together. What's that? There sometimes there is a seventh. I don't remember which one that is. There's one in there's one in Jude. Jude one in Jude. six. Jude six and seven. Yeah, uh, Joan. Jude I, one I, verse seven. Yeah. And I didn't say the one because there's there's only one chapter but yeah 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 jude jude verse six and seven, jude, jude, chapter six seven yeah. yeah yeah all right if anybody has paint you can copy your screen put it in the paint and i copy every screen you put up there i oh. <laughs> keep up with you i i'm but. so glad you said that mom because i meant to tell everybody you can do a screenshot of these yeah. of these right. slides and then go back and yeah i totally forgot to mention that thank you um you can either cut and paste into a, a it, it, everybody's computer is a little different. My computer uh, screen or kind of keyboard has a print, a print screen, screen but button. So I just go bleep and I can copy whatever's up on the screen. For some, it's a function. For you some, to, it's a function. You have to hit the function screen, key and then something And then else. it goes, mine sends it to a, a drive, a folder, but you might have to cut and paste it into another program. Like my I don't think mine does it. Paste it in, yeah, on a tablet, it may not. Yeah. I, can, I, put, oh, I can do the, oh yeah, you can push the, Push the start and yeah. both buttons at the same time and take a picture of it. Yep. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's same a thing. Yep. Screen. Yes, Excellent. I use the paint program. Yeah. And, uh, because I use that all the time for data entry and yeah. copying checks for my daughter and for her business. And yep. so then I just copy what I want and put it into a Word file. So I've got seven pages so far from tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's more than Anne had. <laughs> I just hold up my phone and take a picture. Well, that, well, that, that works that's too. That's, way to <laughs> that's, what, that's what I should try. <laughs> yeah, I love I, it. I'm that's messing awesome. mine all up now. Okay, awesome. let's let's go ahead and before we close tonight, take a look at 
at four general Christian views on homosexuality. Okay, this is Anne's chart she made. And I want you to look at the top and look at those arrows because there are extreme views on both sides, okay? Um, but these are just- On either side. On either yeah. side, yeah. On, <laughs> on the ends. It goes out into infinitum. I think all of us have heard of the, um, what's that Baptist church that- Westboro Baptist. Westboro Baptists who go out and and boycott funerals and I mean they're horrible they're they're, they're horribly yeah. mean and awful to gay people um yeah be off this chart okay so um okay so let's start with the first complete sin view the partial sin view accommodation sin view and the normal variant view so I'm going to go through these um fairly quickly so the complete sin view this is the book they believe, this view believes that that same gender attraction and sexual activity are both sinful and forbidden. And let's, let's remember those are two different things. Right. So one is to be attracted to somebody of the opposite gender. The other is to take action and be sexually active. Both. So another, another way to say this, both homosexual orientation and practice are sin. So the description out of this is all gender variants, including same sex orientation is unnatural immoral and represents deliberate rebellion against God, meaning you have a choice and you're choosing to rebel, thus making it both a disorder resulting from the fall and a personal moral failing requiring repentance and healing. This view at its most charitable calls Christians to hate the sin, but love the sinner. And often um, will say, you know, you can go to therapist or something and you can change regenerative mm -hmm. right therapy regenerative therapy um the partial sin view believes that same gender attraction is not sinful it's not sinful to have the attraction but it is sinful to act on <clears throat> this is known as disorder but not a sin so homosexual practice is sinful but the orientation is not homosexual orientation while not sinful in itself is not a part of god's original design but rather constitutes a post lapsarian disorder, which means part of the brokenness of the world. This is a big word. It just means we're in a broken, fallen world. Many evangelical churches take this position, as does the Catholic Church. Distinguishes between sexual orientation and sexual behavior. Homosexuality may have a biological component and or arise out of socialization beyond an individual's control. This is the group that says you must have been abused as a child. Um, you must have had a domineering mother. You know, there's a there's a nature and nurture reason for this this happening. You might be predisposed because maybe you're a male that has a little more estrogen, so you're a little more feminine, and then you get put into a family that has a domineering mother or an absent father, or you were sexually molested, and then voila, you have a homosexual. That's kind of this partial sin view. Very, very, very common in the church. Uh, the accommodation sin view. This. Uh, this is the view that believes that same gender attraction is not God's intention, but is acceptable in a broken world. Homosexuality is a defective character, but accommodation must be made for it like for divorce. While homosexuality was not part of God's original design, and I think you know we all have to call out the fact that body parts fit with male lying with female, right? Um, so this, they would say that, um, that this is not original design. Covenantial lifelong same-sex unions may be accommodated, however, as a concession for brokenness, similar to the redemptive accommodation made for what? Remarriage after divorce, which, you know, ripped the church up about 20, 30 years ago, right? No, longer than that. Longer than that. Yeah. I'm sorry. You were, were, were. <laughs> um, yeah, probably more like 50 years ago, yes. right? Yeah. Similar to the redemptive accommodation made for marriage and divorce, this view admits that the alternatives of therapy or celibacy only work for a few, and this weakness should be accepted as part of the human condition, not valued as normative, but as acceptable in society, regardless of what religious convictions and practice dictate. So on the partial sin view, um, celibacy on this one, celibacy is the answer. So you have a desire, we're not going to condemn you for it, but just be celibate the rest of your life. Um, the accommodation view says, oh, that doesn't really work for everybody. 
we're going to make a concession for it. You can get married and we're not going to say you're going to burn in hell forever, right? Okay. Then the final um, view is the normal variant view. And this, this is the belief that same gender attraction is just another normal variant with no disability or moral stigma attached to it. They may even claim that God blesses gay unions and holy matrimony. Sexual orientation is not a choice and it's not something people can change, although they have tried. In fact, attempting to change sexual orientation can be harmful. Condemning same-sex relationships and transgender identity bears bad fruit in the lives of LGBTQ people. And there's a better way and it includes God and the Bible and celebrating people. So I think if you go much more off the chart on either side, um, it, they just walk away from God altogether, right? Um, so this is, now, if you have input that you want to add to this chart, please let me know. I created this. It is not um, set in stone or by any means. Um, but let me go back to the, the main one. But I felt like as we've covered other topics, hell, predestination, some of those other topics, looking at what people believe as just black and white is not helpful, just binary, on or off, because that's really not reality. There, there's, as you can see here, there's a lot of varying views and a bunch that can go on that line in between all those boxes. And there are scriptures and explanations of scriptures that can go in every one of those boxes. So I hope that this helps as a foundation and I hope that you come back next week because we're going to start in each box and we're going to um, talk about the scriptures, maybe watch a little video, listen to some stories of real life people who've walked this out. And because this is not just an academic exercise as you all have made it very clear. This is up close and personal. And um, we want to make sure that we are being true and faithful to Father, Son, and Spirit, and how He wants us to live this out in the world. I think the reason, one of the reasons why we hear about it so much more now, is because people have been freed, if you can say that way, from the shame. And they said, Darn it, I'm not living my whole life thinking I'm an abomination. I, you know, forget the church. I'm out of here. I'm going to go live my life because, because who, it's not mentally healthy to live that way, right? To live in shame about how you were created. So um, I think that we need as the church to have some very serious conversations about this, about how we are going to proceed forward. And we need to look at the scriptures because we are people of the word and we want to understand why does the Bible say this and why is my experience saying this? Like, I love this person, you know, or, or maybe you are that person and you just haven't said it. Like, maybe you are somebody that's struggling with same gender attraction and you've never told anybody because you're ashamed of who you are. And I just, I want Cornerstone to be, a, Mark and I both want Cornerstone to be a safe place where people can wrestle with their faith and be loved through the whole process. You might walk out of here at the end of this whole series believing exactly what you believed when you came in and you, you might be in one of those boxes and you might like being in one of those boxes and that is absolutely okay. You're a believer, you're saved and as long as you're not beating up other people in this group, you're absolutely welcome to continue to, to be here and to worship with us. And um, that is our heart. And I hope that is your heart as well. So it's 810. Ooh, I asked for 10 minutes and you gave it to me. Thank you. Um, well, we didn't have a choice. Does in, you didn't have a choice. <laughs> what you just said. You're right. I held you hostage. Um, any last closing comments before we, and I would love for somebody to close us out in prayer. Just, um, I have asked a couple people to be praying for me through this whole thing because I take it really seriously. And I, um, I want to be faithful to God and to you. So if you want to close it out in prayer, I would love that. And are there any other questions or comments about moving forward? I, I 
I do have a very minor point of, of clarification. I, I noted earlier that you said some of us uh, have, you know, friends and relatives who are gay and we just don't talk about it. I just wanted to clarify that it's, it, it, it's not true that Uncle David didn't talk about it or we didn't talk about it because we felt like we, it was something that should be hushed up. It just wasn't an issue. I, I just wanted to make that clear. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It just you. wasn't an issue that bore much. I mean, it wasn't something we felt we needed to talk about. It, it really. Can I ask if he was a religious man? Uh, he was Job's witness for a while. He left the Job's witness church over, you know, his, I, I think he wrestled himself to the ground over this. And, and, and he was, I think, pretty much abused by the Job's witnesses over that. And he still cries over his religion, you know, today sometimes. Mm. But I just wanted, I'm sorry, I'm going to hold the group no, up. I just wanted to make that no, clear. No, that's, that's a good clarification. Right. It wasn't some deep, dark thing that we just, we're afraid or didn't want to talk about it. It's just a or in our discussion. There's no sense of talking about it. It's just it. something that we accepted and just didn't feel it for much. Very good. Okay, no other comments? Janice, are you waving goodbye or you have a comment? Or you want to pray? <laughs> no, 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 I have a comment. Okay. Are you going to send out the the ones with all the letters on it? I'll send, yes, I can send okay. you. And then the, in the other, that other part that you had with the, uh, I got the gender and the sex part, that one I don't need, but the other one, the, the last one you did. I'll the, send everybody the, the whole entire PowerPoint, how's that? Yeah, I like and that. Also a link to I'll upload this to YouTube as I usually do and you can go out and watch it again or yeah. And I, like I do it. actually ask you that if you invite a friend to come that you ask them to watch this video before joining in our second conversation. And if you okay. miss one, I do ask that you keep up with it because there's we're going to be moving yeah. along and I don't want somebody to jump in at week 4 right and grab their suitcase and beat everybody else up with it. So um, yeah, I'm very, I, I'm, I'm protective of this flock of this group. So well, and this, um, the space itself. and this space itself it's very is sacred. sacred. So thank you, Janice. Yeah, I'll, I'll send those out to everybody. Would anybody like to close us out in prayer? If not, it defaults to Mark, you know how that goes. <laughs> The first pastor. The first. <laughs> He's still pastor. Or could we co-pastor? Nobody wants to pray. I will. Stanley Man. Hey. Thank you, Stanley. Awesome. Thank you. Father in heaven, thank you for for your church and your people. And thank you for Christ working in our lives. These are uh, difficult things for us to understand and uh, you're a God whose ways are past finding out untraceable uh, we ask that you give us wisdom and humility and love and give us um, harmony and 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 the great know that the greatest greatest of all is love and love is is what you are so is your very essence. So we ask you give us your enlightenment and understanding and uh, make us, <clears throat> may Christ be glorified in us. In his name we ask. Amen. 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 Thank you, Stanley. All right. Um, feel free to stay on if you'd like and have more conversation, but the official conversation is over. Um, but if you have questions, please feel free. If things that you want to make sure we address, um, put those in the chat room or email or text them to us. And we will include them along the way.